Hello and welcome to your mod spotlight over Inferno Robotics. This mod adds a whole ton of robotic parts that we're going to jump right into seeing. As you can see, most of the parts are, all of the parts, are found in the utility tab where you have adjustable rails, docking washers, and gantry rails. We'll be getting into all these in just a moment. First, let's take a quick look at the UI. If you have the toolbar plugin installed, you'll get this window. If you don't have it, this window will automatically be there and you won't be able to hide it. Now, you just have a couple of buttons. Let's quickly add a part here, the powered hinge. Now, what you see is you get group name and the name of the servo. This lets you tell them apart much more easily, as well as you have a rotate button. What rotate does is it rotates the part 45 degrees along the top axis, as you can see. And you can name these whatever you want. If you want to name this first, you can name it first. And if you want to name this, then you can call it something like hinge one. Who knows? Um, keys. The keys for the group name can be set to anything, such as O and P. So we've made our quick hop out of the VAB, and what we get for UI is this. Now this will have a list of all of your different um, groups, and this one's called first. And what we can do with it is we can click these two arrows to bend this servo. And powered hinge servo, both names work accurately enough, but you can see that it bends it back and forth, and pushing the center button or return it to its default state. Now, in the newest version, 0.15b of Inferno Robotics, when you right-click on a part, you get all of these different options. And what you can do with these different options is if we want the min rotation to be, let's say, negative 16, when we try to rotate it that direction, if you see, it's not going any further. That's because the min rotation is set to negative 16 degrees. If we set it to negative 44, we can go a little bit further but if we bring it up to negative 10 then it will jump there anytime we try to move the servo regardless of its direction and you can do the same thing to the max rotation too you can alter how far it can go or you can just leave these at their defaults also you have coarse speed and fine speed coarse speed is basically the set speed the servo will move for example if we boost that to 5 instead of 1 you can see the servo is moving much faster. You used to only be able to change this by changing this number. You can still change this number to increase the speed. However, you can do it to individual parts now, not just groups. Because this number affects the entire group, whereas this number affects the part only. Now what fine speed does is the same thing as core speed. It adjusts the speed, only this will give you more versatility. For example, if you see, when I adjust course speed, the lowest I can adjust it by is 0.1 on the scale. Fine speed, I can adjust it by 0.01 on the scale. And if I adjust this to here, this thing's speed will be 4.05. And this one will only go up to 0.1 or negative 0.1 and up to a max of 0.1. If you leave it at 0, the speed will remain at exactly 4. This allows you to fine tune the exact speed you want to go. For example, if you want 2.45 total speed, then that's how you set it. Now, engage, we'll skip over invert axis and hit engage lock. Engage lock basically means the part cannot move. Even though my degrees of movement are free, the part will not move as long as the lock is engaged. That way you can disable some parts individually and control others with the group. And invert axis basically inverts the way it rotates. If you see, I'm clicking the left arrow and it's rotating to the right. And when I push the right arrow, it rotates to the left. If I take off the inversion, when I push the left arrow, it rotates to the, or the right arrow rotates to the right and left arrow to the left. Next up, we have the adjustable rail. And similarly to the powered hinge, this has a few settings we can set. For example, we can set its translation, but first I'll show you what it can do. What this part does is when you push the arrows to control it with your UI, 
it will move the rail outward, this section always away from the nub, and anything connected to it. For example, I have a couple of drills here. And what's neat about this mod is it will change the actual design of the vessel as you move these parts. For example, the center of mass changes, and eventually my vessel will topple over. And just retracting it won't fix the problem, but it will set the vessel back to the way it was. So dynamically changing vessels are a plus with this mod. So we've seen what it can do. Let's see what we can change about it. Now min translate and max translate is how far it can translate. It can move two meters to the left in this case, but it depends on whatever direction you set it as. It's a free attachable part. And if we set the min translate to something like pretty much one, then it will only be able to move half the distance and then it will lock up and we can't go any further. And if you set the minimum translate to let's say 0.3, then we won't be able to bring it back all the way either. It will still lock up. And of course these are nice and adjustable in the newest version of this mod. So we can just easily fix it. Course speed works the same way as the previous um, powered hinge, except this time it translates to the side instead of rotating. Um, engage lock and invert axis are the same. This will just change the direction that it can push. And something to note is the center button will always bring it back to its original state. See how it brings it to the center? Even if we invert the axis, it will not bring it outward. It will still bring it to the center. We have the docking washer here, and this is a rotating part. However, it does not adhere to the min and max rotation. We'll see another part that we can use this for. It has the same controls as usual, but what this part does is it allows you to spin a vessel. And of course, you have adjustable speed settings. And what this can do is it's very helpful in allowing you to create when you're docking your vessel together in creating space stations it allows you to align things a certain way that you want and you don't have to worry about getting it aligned while docking of course if you push the center button it will just spin it and revert it to its original position where you can spin it counterclockwise and clockwise unless you invert it one last thing to note is you cannot force this part to rotate even with RCS so it will only rotate if you tell it to you cannot force it using RCS that is another part and that other part is the docking washer free moving in parentheses at the end. The difference between this one and the previous one I have just shown is we cannot control this one. By pushing the servo controller, nothing happens. However, this one can freely spin using things like engines or RCS. And it will freely spin until, of course, friction stops it. One quick thing to note that I managed to forget is when you have two different types of things or two different of the same item that you want to control separately from these you just push add new group and if you scroll over you'll see these down arrows and all you have to do is push on the down arrow to move it to the other group and the same settings will apply as usual so next up we have the gantry rails and the variant I have back here which we'll show in a second but the first one seems to be a little bit afraid of being clicked on, and I'm going to assume this is a bug. But it has the same exact translation settings as this one. So let's look at it. What does it do? Well, when we push the two keys to move it, and we'll just speed this up. When we push our keys to move it, as you can see, the center platform here will move left and right and by pushing it in the center it will return exactly to the center. Now what the variant does is if we rotate this around a little the variant rotates this bar through the center instead of moving the center sorry I'm saying rotate instead of moving the center it's moving the bar through the center point meaning if you attach things on the sides then you can give them extended reach but that center node will not move and of course negative 2 meaning all the way to the left or 2 all the way to the right and we can use the normal settings so these are the gantry rails and it comes in two variants 
along with the gantry rail coming in a couple two different variants it also comes in a ton of different sizes now what I've shown you is the gantry rail junior now the full-size version is this huge and it also comes in one-half versions and a quarter versions uh, all these versions have different or the same strength capabilities they're just different sizes depending on kind of the style of part you want to look at and also your needs for example this one is not going to have a proper node for attaching a two and a half meter part whereas the max size gantry rail would have that node now we've got the three different variants of the door hinge as you can see powered hinge or door hinge as they're called in VAB and first off circuit who is in charge of this mod or at least updating on the forums I believe it was originally developed by Raymond has deemed this hinge broken. The powered hinge he has deemed broken because it does not work. It was part of its own group called New Group 1. I know, generic name. And that group has disappeared. Also, if you edit any of the settings in here, they don't take hold. And if it's part of another group, it doesn't. Con it won't be controlled. So, just a heads up, this part is deemed broken currently. Now, what we have here is the powered hinge, and of course you can set your settings, or you can see how it works. It starts off closed and can rotate 180 degrees, opening flat, as you see. Whereas the other part, which is the powered hinge open, starts open and will rotate until it is completely closed. as you can see. Now we've got the power hinge and we've already seen this before. This one comes in two variants, standing up straight and the one bent 90 degrees. And as you can see this one will rotate left and right up to 90 degrees on either side. This one will rotate from 0 to 180 in this direction. Both work the same and have the same settings where you can limit the rotation and adjust their speed. We're going to start off looking at the hydraulic cylinder and telescopic piston in the VAB because they have a couple special attachment rules. The hydraulic cylinder, as you can see, cannot radially attach like all the other parts have been able to previously. This one can only attach to nodes. Whereas the telescopic piston has two nodes. It has one on the bottom, where my mouse is over, and one just above it. This one attaches inside of different parts and extends outward toward the top node. So you can chain these together such as this and extend them both out. And the piston comes in several different varieties which all have their unique own sizes up to a half and fourth variants. And to show you how these parts work, you, the piston will translate up and down just like any other part reaching a max extension. The hydraulic cylinder, this piece in here, the hydraulic piston, will extend out from whatever part it's inside of up to its maximum. And at the same time, since it goes through parts, when it extends, it does not reduce its size in the back. So it does not move away. It pushes out of its shell, whereas the back end of it still will stick through vessels. So keep that a note when you're building if you think that part is going to move away. So, the last couple of parts we have added here are the ones that like to rotate. And unlike the previous ones, if you change these settings, they can. Now, to see what it does, as you see it can rotate counterclockwise, and it can rotate clockwise. However, do keep in mind that this one cannot rotate infinitely in one direction. When it reaches 360 degrees, it will stop. And of course, if you want to reduce how far it can go, to let's say 278, then first it will jump to it, because that's the furthest rotation, and you see we can't go any further. Unless, of course, we edit it to go a little bit further, then it will let us. Now, set this back to max. Of course, we can change the speed and invert it, engage lock, like all of the other parts. Now, I've attached an engine and you might be wondering why. Well, 
just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you that when we fire an engine, this part can rotate it. As you see, this part has no issue rotating the engine that is currently active. The ability to rotate firing engines adds a lot of possibility to VTOL engines, or VTOL ships, and the changing positions of large stations or large craft when you try to rotate them, whereas the reaction control system works extremely slowly, you could just maneuver a couple of these firing engines around to help steer your vessel. The Rotatatron has a big brother part called the Rotatatron Mark II, which has all the same functionalities for rotation, except it's a lot larger and can only radially connect. It has no node on the bottom point, but you can radially connect it to the sides of vessels in helps of creating your VTOL craft, and just like the smaller part, it can rotate a thrusting engine. Lastly, we have the VTOL Rotor Mark I, which has the same rotation settings, except this time it rotates at an angle, meaning you can stick this on the side of your vessels, just like previous ones, except this time the bending port will automatically adjust your engine to be pointing toward the ground, so that when you fire it off, you can rotate it to help control where your vessel's going. As you can see, I'm just sliding mine around the launch pad, until of course we flip over. This has been your mod spotlight over Infernal Robotics. The only real limitations you have with the robotic parts added from this mod is your own creativity. And as you can see, I have made a tree here. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I am PTTGRW. I'll see you next time.